first thing I would like to do is thank Macney for the honour that they bestowed on Armstrong Mole. This is quite, quite an honour and we think it's an achievement. Um, I'd like to introduce first the wife of 60 years. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Armstrong team to stand just a minute and take a bow. This isn't for us, this is for all of us. The fact that we're standing here tonight is almost a miracle because when you get to our age, we tend to fall asleep in the afternoon. <laughs> and, uh, once, one weekend, I was fast asleep, the phone rang. Well, we get many, many calls from GOP looking for contributions of the troopers for this and that. We do our best to give it. And Beck kept saying, we don't want any more, we don't want any more. So I almost hung the phone up. There's only, there's only as I was hanging it up. And after a little few minutes, the word Magni came back out of it. And I thought, well, as I mentioned to Pete next day, I've, well, somebody asked me, did somebody call you from Magni? I said, well, there's somebody called me from the GOP. And it could have been Magni. <laughs> because for all practical purposes, I hung up on that. But whoever it was, I think it was my palm pilot. Anyway, I called back a day later and thanked him, and this is why we're here tonight. I just want to make a, another few comments, if you can. Bear with me a minute. Beth and I have been married for 60 odd years. When I first married, courted her, I had no idea of her financial aptitude or ability. She got other talents that I was focusing on. Very, very good financially, so it's no accident we become successful, and it's certainly not entitled to me. Oh, yeah. um, when I first got into this, someone said, You got, thank you for the plaque, and you got three minutes. The first, the first thing I had to do, I had a two hour speech of politically incorrect comments and wordy and and jokes. So that went down the window, but I would like to just hold on for a few seconds with a couple of comments. If I can remember what they are. <laughs> this won't take too long. I started 60 years ago as an apprentice wood pattern maker in England. So I'm basically a craftsman person at heart. I mean, there's a major technology revolution going on around, which I'm aware of, and I'm basically a craftsman at heart. And um, the dream for starting Armstrong Mall, the plan was, if you could call it a plan, was 10 to 15 employees running and making models and making castings. That's where my background is, making metal castings of a small foundry. But the thing kept growing. And I, I, my interest was, I had no interest in growth. I really wasn't interested in making money, that was. <laughs> <laughs> and I never had the thought of failure. It was only years later that somebody said, what about if you fail? And I thought, geez, I never even thought that could happen. <laughs> Stupid it may be, but that's how it is the real world. So, one day I said to Beth, I can't understand why we keep getting bigger. I'm only interested in getting better. And she's very profound. She said, there's yeah, the problem. If you want to get better, you're going to get bigger. And it's no more than ISO saying constant improvement. It's no more than Tom Peters saying, build it, then fix it. 
As a matter of fact, the, 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 the motto at Armstrong Mold is, we're very proud of what we've achieved, but we're not satisfied. And that's really the way it works. And I think that's the way we've got to say. <laughs>